Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll get right into today's Bible lesson. Father, we thank you again today. <laughs> oh, my. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, greater one that lives within us, our teacher, our comforter, our guide, our intercessor, our standby. Oh, we thank you. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you today, sir, for the covenants of God. <laughs> thank you, Lord, for giving us the word of faith by which and through which our personal Garden of Eden can come to pass. And we thank you for the blessing of Abraham. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. amen. <clears throat> We've been talking about the blessing of God. Well, it, it is, but actually coming out of that garden fiasco. Now, Adam was the God of this world. He had every, he had the authority to do what he did. He committed high treason. And under that moment of pressure, mm -hmm. he just gave his authority over. He could have said, take your hands off my wife. You just shut up. Because the scripture says she was deceived, but he wasn't. And he could have looked over that herd and said, baby, he didn't say we, we couldn't touch it, but just let it alone. And he never took any responsibility for it. Anyway. We'll actually blame God for he it. He blamed God for it. And then he, he blamed his wife and then blamed God That's for exactly giving her it to him. That's what he did. So he literally gave this whole earth to the devil. He had the authority to do it. He did not have the moral right to do it. But God had given it to him. He, God had, was hands off. God did his part. He purposely gave him every point there to repent, and he didn't do it. Mm -hmm. That's right. So now, as we said yesterday, he began right then to get it back, to get that garden back, to get this whole thing back. The plan was already in motion. Now let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. Yes, sir. The 28th chapter <clears throat> is the blessing of the Lord blessing Abraham. Look at the second verse. All these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if you will hearken, if you will listen to the voice of the Lord thy God. We would say today, be led by the Spirit. Yeah. Just do what I tell you. That's do. exactly right. That's exactly right. You got to listen. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Mm -hmm. That's faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Exactly right. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Let's talk about kind. Okay. That's not K-I-N-D. It's K-I-N-E. It sure is. <clears throat> okay. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. What's that? That's the um, fourth what? verse. Fourth verse. Now, wait a minute. I'm in the wrong app. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's go to the Blue Bible app. <clears throat> Okay. It, it, wouldn't it be strange to come up? Everybody open your iPad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
we go to Deuteronomy 28. Okay, four. And we go to the concordance. The increase of thy kind. There it is in Hebrew. Aleph. Aleph. Cattle. Oxen. And farming. As a possession. That's all the equipment you need to do what you're called to do. Greg, that was the, I, 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 I use that a lot. That was, I, I went there believing God for that citation 10. For a brand new jet, debt free. I needed that jet. The one I had was too slow and it, it, I couldn't get out of the United States with it <clears throat> or this North American continent. I needed to go international and I needed to go fast. 92% of the speed of sound with that airplane. Mm. Do you know that airplane was the same speed and we're still flying it today. That's the same speed as the F-86 in the, in the, in the Korean War. Isn't that something? It was subsonic. Well, so are we. Mm -hmm. But in the dive test, of course, it had to do supersonic. Anyway, I, I was using that because of that. I need that. That was your kind. That's the blessing of the Lord. Everybody reads K-I-N-D, not K-I-N-E. It's pronounced kind and kind. Mm. There it is. It's the tools you need to do what he's called yes. you to do. You need or, oxen. You need trucks. You need computers. Yeah. That's what I used to believe for a direct TV. Praise God. I called, I called George and Terry. I said, look, the kind. He <laughs> said, what? I said, the kind, the K-I-N-E. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. can do that. And it came in in record time. Yeah, man. The, the kind for record time. Yeah, I mean, it, but it's the blessing. It's the tools you need, everything you need to do what God's called you to do in the blessing is there. Where's my camera? If you'll just hear his voice. Let me, let me remind you something here now. There's blood behind this. Yes, sir. Started out with the blood of animals. Then it became the blood of a man through circumcision. Yes, sir. Then it became the blood of God through the blood of Jesus. Yes, sir. And there's where we live, glory to God. The blessing actually became flesh. Ah, came into the earth yes. to, sign, oh, to sign the agreement, sir. Yes. That's what he did. That's what he did. And so all of these covenants are getting us back to the place. It's just, I, I call it a ladder. You go from Adam to Noah, oh, and then more is, good, more is revealed. Adam, Noah. From Noah, we go you to know, Abraham. I forgot, I forgot about Noah because what, he flooded it all out. He said the same words to Noah that he said to Be Adam. Be fruitful and multiply. <sighs> he didn't change. That's the pattern. And then you come down to Joseph. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, and Potiphar saw the anointing on him yes, and that God was with him, turned his whole operation over to him. Mm -hmm. And he ran it. How do you and know how? The blessing on his life. Taught him how to run this big Not only operation. saved Egypt, but will save Israel because they'll move down there. And, and God even told Abraham for 430 years, your people will be in Egypt, but I'm going to bring them out to the place I promised you because the land is part of that. And all the kind you need for the land is part yeah. of that. He didn't leave anything undone, Brother Copeland. No, he didn't. Not a single thing. Uh, not one jot or tittle. Can't. Not one dot of an I or the cross nope. of a T. It is exact. He is so detailed in everything that he does. And so I, if I tell you that, that he's so detailed, whatever he's promised to you has to come to pass. Don't struggle with your rent. Mm. Relax. I have a covenant with God. Jesus 
offered me a covenant. Yes, he did. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Mm-hmm. He's not talking to unbelievers. No, he's talking to believers. It's available for an un, for a unbeliever. He's talking to believers. I stand at the door of your heart. I'm knocking. I'm your Savior, but I'm not your Lord. You sweating the rent. Mm. He offered covenant. He said, I will come in and my Father will, we, we, we will, this is, hey, we will come in and we will sup with you. We will come in and eat with you. This, this is an Eastern book and you have to be Eastern minded or renew your mind to think like Eastern Mm -hmm. thoughts. Mm -hmm. That's what this man has done even to a great, much greater degree than I have. So what was he saying? If you'll let me in your, if you'll let me in that house, I'll pay the rent. That's right. Baby, there's no use in you worrying about it. I'll come in. I'll, I'll take care of all of all the costs. I'll pay off your house. I'll take, what do you have to do? Listen mm-hmm. and quit worrying about it. Quit crying around about it. I don't know what, no, that did, no, 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 no. You remember when he told that guy, hey, Come here. We're going to your house for yeah. lunch today. Get down out of that tree, Shorty. We're, we're, we're going to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> this, guy, this guy was a... You think that guy sweat about what he's going to serve him? I don't think he did. I think Jesus brought lunch. Well, That's he it. knew his name. He knew it. How'd he know my name? Right. I don't know him. So if you let him into your house, you don't have to worry about what you're going to provide for him. He's Isn't got that That good. I guarantee he sent Judas to go, go get lunch. We're going to his house. <laughs> that's because that's his character and nature. This that's is what I'm talking do. about. This whole thing going widescreen. You, you begin to think covenant. You begin to think the word. I, I, I've, I've turned my household over to him. Mm-hmm. And poor, back there in that beginning, particularly before Gloria and I knew anything about this, we were just learning. God was doing little, little, little small miracles just to get, to get us food. Mm-hmm. But we were so thrilled. We didn't care where he got it. Right. <laughs> we were just so thrilled with the word. And we had just finally just turned everything over to him. I don't care what it is. He'll take care of it. What he said, I'm going to start. I learned that from my father in the faith, Oral Roberts. Right. He said, Kenneth, when he tells me to build a building, I dig a hole. Hmm. He's doing what he said, hearken unto my voice. And he actually did that. Did he? Yeah. He stood out there on South Lewis. There's not a building on that place. <laughs> stood out there and pray in tongues and interpret. And the Lord told him how to build this and how to build that. Mm. He brought everything, he liquidated everything that he personally owned. He said, don't ever start any kind of project w- w- without a significant seed. Brought it all, liquidated it all. Mm. This was back years ago, but it was over $100,000 in, in, in land and everything he and Evelyn owned personally, liquidated it and brought it before the board of directors of that ministry and said, we're going to build a university and I'm the first giver. Mm. He didn't ask them if we could build a university. He said, I'm going to build a university and I'm the first giver. Mm. He'd already heard back when he got healed of tuberculosis. And he's walking it out. He's walking it out. At that point. That's so good. But God supped with him. Yes, sir. He had covenant with him. He just, he said, everything has a key issue. That is to me personally. And he said, when the money's not flight right, there's a key issue. And only the people that live and walk by faith can find that key issue. He said, it's like a Chinese puzzle. Hmm. Once you find that key issue where the devil has it bottlenecked, turn that key issue and the bottleneck will leave. And he said, most of the time, it's because you're not walking in love. Mm. Mm -hmm. So all of these covenants build one upon another. 
from uh, Moses, we go that to... That stair step is interesting. From Moses, we go right to David. Now more is revealed in David. See, it started off with one man, with Abraham. Then it became a nation with Moses. Now it's becoming refined a kingship, an everlasting kingship through oh. David. See, so he's, he's, pointing, he's pointing it down to a point in time when the blessing is going to come into the earth in a town called Bethlehem. And somebody from David's line will sit on the throne forever. From David, we enter into what we know as now our new covenant, us. And then we'll enter into that everlasting covenant, which is Eden again. And so each one is a step. Now, spiritually speaking, we're there. We're already back at Eden, spiritually speaking. Yeah. But like you talked about this flesh, that hadn't gotten there yet. That will get there. Uh, Jesus is there. But we'll get there. You know, it never ceases to amaze me, Greg, how how God had to handle the bloodlines. Oh, you know, him. the devil's cutting in there every way he can yes, to keep that bloodline from getting where it's supposed to be. He, he's got it's got to come through David. It, it's, it has to because he said it would. Yes, and it looked impossible. Did you bring that outline with you that shows? I did. Now here's the deal. What if I told you there was a king of David, uh, one of his grandsons, that God will curse and put a blood curse on him. And that happened. When that happened... The devil thought he had it oh fixed. Oh, my God, he thought he had he it. He had to break the... Oh, I got him, I got, I got him. him. I got him, I got he, him. He can't, it, it, it can't make it. I'll read it to you. It's in Jeremiah chapter 22 and verse 30. God will pronounce a blood curse. Thus saith the Lord, write ye this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days. You don't ever want to hear that. For no man of his seed shall prosper setting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. The devil thought, well, I got, got him. him. Got him. When they did, when that was said by prophet Jeremiah, the priests went and they ripped their garments and put ashes on their head and fasted and mourned because the word's not true. And if you've ever thought the word's not true, let me just... This is a, Brother Copeland, this is a blood curse. This is a generational curse. Yeah. And those of you that think you're under a generational curse, how did God get around this? Well, <laughs> it goes back to Moses and the children in the desert coming out. It's, there was a man named Zelophehad, and he had five daughters. Now, Zelophehad died, the scripture says, died in his sin, meaning he didn't believe. He was one of the ones that didn't believe that were able to take the land. Remember that generation was cut off. Yeah. But he had five daughters. Now the five daughters go to Moses as they're getting ready to go into their promised land <laughs> with all the blessing and the cursing. I love it. And they said, um, we don't have any husbands. We don't have a father. It's not right. We don't have an inheritance. So Moses goes before the Lord to hear him. He goes to the tabernacle meeting to hear what God wants him to do. Didn't just give an answer. So when he does this, God says, here's what will happen. If the woman marries within her tribe, she receives full inheritance of her tribe. All right? So as long as she marries within her tribe. So this is why I brought a chart. You ready? This is why you had to have a virgin birth. We're coming up right here on Christmas. Now look at this. This is, Jesus is of the tribe of Judah. So is David. Mary's father, Halai, and Mary are of the tribe of Judah. Now, their cousin, he's a priest. Um, a, 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 her cousin, Mary's mother, as, as Elizabeth's mom, are both cousins. But they're of the tribe of Levi. Sure, he's a priest. Because John the Baptist is of Levi, even though it's his cousin, because that's where his family's from. But Mary... Mary's over here. This is why the angel, Brother Copeland, the first recorded ministry of an angel in the New Testament was coming to Mary. And then that angel, and well, went to Zechariah as well, but goes to Joseph and says, the thing that's of her is of God. You bear marry her. So he has to marry her. So she, Mary will, her daddy has no sons. She marries within her tribe. She marries Joseph because the angel speaks to him. She bypasses the bloodline. Let me show you why. This is why it had to be a virgin birth. Here's the legal line. I didn't go all the way back to Abraham. Jesse, David, Solomon, Rehoboam. This guy right here, there's the guy. 
That's the guy that had the blood curse put on him. So everybody, and Joseph is right here in that bloodline. Everybody in this bloodline is of the curse cannot sit on the throne of David. Because I just read it to you in Jeremiah. Nobody from this line can sit on the throne. How do we get around that? Well, let's look at Mary's. This is why Matthew and Luke have two different genealogies. Exactly right. It's why it's in there, because it's legal. <laughs> Look what God does. Jesse, David. Oh, wait, who's this guy? Nathan. Nathan. It's the other son of David and Bathsheba. He didn't sit on the throne, but he's the other son. He's just as so much a son of David as Solomon is. But Mary's family, Halai, right here, Mary's father, is of Nathan. So guess what? Jesus can come through Mary. This is why you had to have a virgin birth, Brother Copeland, because there's no seed of this curse in Jesus. That's it. Come on, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. And so when Satan thought he had him, my I got you. He already had this planned out. It goes all the way back to Moses with the daughters of Zelophehad. If you marry within your tribe, this is why the angel told Joseph, marry her. What's of her is of God. And this is why they came together. They got married. And this is why God had to shut the mouth of yes. the priest. Yes. So that this thing will come to pass. He's watching over that. Now, if he's that detailed to you or, or to this, he's that detailed to the word that he spoke to you as well. Isn't that wonderful? So if I'm in Christ Jesus, and I know people, I know a lot of people like to have generational curses in their family, but it's gone in my family, in yes, me. It is. Because of Jesus, my awareness of this, there can be no blood generational curse in me. The racism that was in the Stevens family is gone in yes. my generation. Yes, amen. Because of the blood of Jesus. Yes, sir. Praise God. Praise God. He got around it legally. So in the same chart, this is the legal line for Jesus to sit on the throne through David. Because of Joseph, mm -hmm. but this is the bloodline, sir. This is the bloodline, and this is down here. It's pure. And down here is where we came in. Yes, sir. You and I have been grafted into all of the covenants by the blood of Jesus, by the blood there of There it is. So, therefore, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not under the curse. You, people tell me, well, you better be careful saying that. Why? You, you're telling me that the blood of Jesus and that his, the Father's accuracy to make sure that came to pass now, is not the now, case? And, and for those of you that, that are not, uh, you're, you're new with us. Numbers 26. We right? know we have what we say. Yes, sir. Because Jesus said that and we believe it. I will never have the flu again in my life hereafter forever. I do all of those things that, that I need to do. I take good care of my physical body. I obey God. I eat right, live right, talk right, and believe right. You can't put the flu on me. Mm -hmm. You can't. You know, I've had the symptoms of it mm -hmm. at the minister's conference lasted about 15 minutes. All the symptoms are there. I'm chilling. I never got, got the smile off my face. But you could have yielded to it. Oh, yeah. If I had, I'd have been sick. Yes, sir. But I just sat there and said, you can't put that on me. You know you can't put that on me. Like Brother Hagin said, I haven't had a sick day. Now, he said, I've had some marvelous opportunities <laughs> to yes, be sick. Yes, but it just passed them by. Amen. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.